Hey guys, welcome back to part 2 of Beginner's Guide to Entity Composite. So in this video, we'll be looking at how we'll build the palette, the distal and mesa wall and also how to fill up the whole tutla. So we will start off from where we left off in part 1. If you haven't seen that, please go and watch part 1 before we start this. So yeah, this is after applying bonding agent. So we are going to build the palatal wall freehand using a celluloid strip or a cellulose, celluloid matrix. So the problem with using freehand technique like this is when you press the celluloid strip with your finger, it tends to cave in. But you need something that is more of a natural curve. So what we'll usually do is place the cellular strip with the finger, place composite and use our plastic filling instrument to slightly pull the cellular strip lingually or palatally. So in this case, I'm going to use A1 from Tokuyama Palpik. Just place a small amount at the cellular matrix and start compacting it. Compact it downward and upwards at the same time. I know it's a bit hard to understand that. See, I'm pressing it downwards so that it's against the celluloid strip all the time and then slowly pushing it upwards. You want this layer to be about 0.5 to 1 mm thick. If it's 2 mm, it's a bit too thick so you won't have enough to place denting. You can see all, while I'm checking, while I'm compressing the composite, I'm also checking to see if I have enough in height. So that is how I usually determine. Lah. I'm going to pull and see if I got enough height. For this step, you will generally need your assistant to help you cure when you're done. Lah. So while you're pulling and holding the cellulite strip, when you're done, you're ready, you can ask your assistant to cure. So you can see me always checking. And when I'm ready, I'm going to see if mesially and lingually there's enough composite. And see, I'm going to hold with my plastic filling instrument, hold it at, at an angle where you're comfortable and cure. So after you've cured, you can slowly rip the plastic off and that's your lingual wall. It's ready. So for the proximal wall, I, I usually use a metallic matrix like this. This is a spoon matrix. So I'll do one wall at a time. So in this case, you can see that my palatal wall was slightly uh, deficient so i'm adding a bit of flowable and then i'm gonna add my packable composite ore so for this the same way the wall shouldn't be more than one mm thick if it's too thick it's gonna be a bit unnatural because the shape will be off so i'm gonna use just 0.5 mm so this is a side view you can see I've only placed a bit of composite but I'm going to use my plastic filling to really compact it and for your knowledge there should be more composite in the middle third because the middle third is the thickest part of the stool and then it should curve in near the incisal edge and the cervical edge just like I'm doing here and any excess composite you can just cut it off at the top at the incisal so you see I'm just compacting and I'm going to cut it off at the top and at the cervical. You can also use a sharp instrument like what I'm about to do now to get it at a better line so that it adapts better and is sharper. See? And of course, check palatally, remove any excess. One more thing to note is in this video, I'm going to make it slightly more uh, thicker than what I usually would do because I want to show you all how to trim it lah, since this is a beginner's guide. This is just me using silicone brush and stick resin to smoothen out my wall. So you can see I've really smoothened it out at the cervical and at the incisor. Sorry, this part of the video is a bit blur. Uh, so before I cure, I'm going to hold it with my plastic filling instrument and cure. So after I've cured, I'm going to place my plastic filling instrument and release my matrix before I pull it out. So this is my wall. So from the side, you can see it is slightly more than what I want. Okay. And another tip to note is a lot of people place their matrix in this kind of way. It's not fully in. But that is wrong. Lah. You must always push it as deep as it goes. See, it must be in the gums. 
okay then you can continue the same thing in the mesial side just slowly start packing composite and yeah i'm gonna speed it up a bit because it's literally the same at the other side so curve it in a bit at the cervical and at the incisor so that you have a smooth curvature and the mesial mesial pull up middle should be the most thickest part lah. for this i'm gonna hold the matrix to make the wall a bit more straighter i'll be showing that in the few coming seconds before that we use some silicon brush to just make it all smooth so i'll show you the holding part i'm gonna remove the palatal region first okay any excess has been removed okay see i'm using my finger to push the matrix so that the the wall is more straight because the mesial wall is always more straighter than the distal wall and i'm gonna cure are we ready to cure yes we are ready to cure so once you cure, you can separate the matrix and remove it. This step is very important, the separating the matrix part so that you don't pull off your mesial or distal wall together with your matrix band. La. See how tight is it? So you don't want to pull it all off, la. all your hard work going to waste. So now I'm going to show you my trick to a better more natural looking filling anterior filling so i usually like to take a shade called clear enamel so this is just 100 percent translucent i'll take it in my finger and try to make it into a worm like by just rolling it in my finger so this is the part that i'm showing you i just roll it in my finger make it like into a worm or a sausage take it straight onto the tooth See, just place it onto the tooth so this is really clear so it's going to give you that halo effect lah, of the enamel that we like okay so just adapt it onto the thing onto your palatal wall that is why if your palatal wall is slightly shorter than your adjustant tooth it's not really going to be a problem lah. then use the silicone brush to really adapt it well Okay, follow all the curvature, adapt it well, and we are going to cure it. So this is how it's going to look like uh, after you've added the clear enamel. So the next step obviously is going to be dentin. So I'm going to use OA2 which is an opaque shade of A2. So I'm just going to add a bit of dentin into the places where there needs to be dentin replacement. Uh. Since our veneer prep is mostly enamel, the cervical and middle third, I'm not really going to add any dentin. So I'm just going to add it to the incisor and a half of the middle third. Lah. So you can see I'm just creating some mamelons using my sharp ingredient. This is a slanted view. You can actually appreciate all the mamelons. Lah. I've added six mamelons. You can do it based on your own creativity and use some stick resin with silicone brush to just smoothen everything. And for the last layer, I'm going to use an instrument like this that looks like a spade. Take one lump of A1. This is your last layer. Usually, I wouldn't recommend you adding too much after this. Just take in excess and place it really neatly along the cervical margin and push it up towards the incisor. Preferably, let's take enough composite on the first attempt. But if you don't have enough, you can take more like this. Place it in the center and gently adapt it back into place. After pressing it all in, I'm going to use some stick resin with silicone brush and just adapt everything into place. See, I'm just slowly smoothening everything. So I'm not really focusing on creating line angles or anything at this point. I just want everything to be smooth everything to be well adapted you can see just smoothening everything make sure there's no defi deficiency there's no air bubble and then for the cervical part i like to use a paint brush 
So that has brought me to the end of part 2. We have really added all the enamel. So on the next part, I will be showing you all how to finish and polish and get a lifelike restoration. So join me in part 3 and I hope you've learned something. Let's take it slow and steady in this series and I hope to catch you in part 3. See you. Bye-bye.